To the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, we are blowing in the wind. So we're gonna be taking a look at how to measure the speed of the wind and to record that in your Nature Journal. Today, what I'm gonna be doing is using a system that was developed by a naval officer in the uh, British Navy to try to figure out at what point they should lower their sails so that they're ships wouldn't be ripped apart in the wind. So it's called the Buford Wind Scale. And it's a, it's a way of figuring out the speed of the wind by observing phenomenon around you. So that could be a flag that's fluttering. It could be tree branches blowing. It could be how high the waves are. It could also be taking a look at the size of the waves. So, the, uh, the, hold up, I like that hat, hold on. Oh. So, today, there's a very strong wind blowing through the city of San Francisco, and I'm on the top of Tank Hill here. Flags are fluttering straight out. I'm looking up at trees behind me. And the entire tree is swaying. So that is going to be my clues for going into a chart of the Beaufort wind scale and seeing how fast this wind is. See, here we go. If it's cold, no wind, that's a zero. If it's a hurricane, that's a 12. So in this case, we've got, oh. Walking against the wind is difficult, but not impossible. Your hat won't stay on. There's no way you could hold an umbrella in this. So I look at all those clues, and that's telling me that we are about at a seven on the Buford scale here today. If it were an eight, I'd see branches breaking off of trees and flying away, and it would be really impossible for me to walk this way. So right now I can go back and forth here. You see, it's difficult to walk against the wind, but it's not, it's not one of these things where you're going like a mime trying to be blown into the wind, right? So what I'm going to do is in my journal, I'm going to record today strong wind and I'm going to write it as, as a seven. So here we go. What I like to do in my journal is with my metadata, all right, where I'm writing my date, my location, if it's really windy, I'll draw some little wind marks. And today I'm even gonna throw some little chunks blown up into the wind. And then I want to be a little bit more specific. Today is a seven on the Buford scale. So by quantifying things like that, I can even get things like how fast the wind is blowing and be able to document that in my journal. I'm gonna to move to a more sheltered place. Let's discuss this a little bit more. The Beaufort wind scale is a lot of fun. And if you start playing with it, it's, you're gonna find that it gets you kind of out in all sorts of crazy weather. You go like, oh wow, it's a really windy day. I wanna go record what's going on. And you'll see all sorts of interesting patterns. You start looking around, try to find the place in your neighborhood or in the area where you live or explore that has the strongest winds. 
See if you can predict where that will be just by looking at the shapes of plants around you. And then on a really windy day, run out to those spots. Feel what it's like on those really intense wind occasions. And then start to go downhill or into greater shelter. Record the changes in the wind speed that you get as you go around to different places in your environment. Where is it really sheltered? Where is it the most exposed? Where is the wind the highest? Where is it lowest? You don't have to memorize the Beaufort wind scale. I keep a copy of it in my journal. So you can go print these um, out. Uh, you can find them online. And I'm going to put in the show notes a link to a copy of the Beaufort scale that you can have in your journal. You can just take it, glue it into the back of your journal. And then you'll have it whenever you need. It's a scale that goes from zero, originally up to 12, which is hurricane force winds. Um, now they actually made it go all the way to 17 because they wanted even more descriptors of what happens in these massive storm events. At zero, that's no wind at all. Things are completely still, so smoke will rise vertically. Water is just like a sheet of glass. When you get up to, say, level two, that's when the wind is blowing powerful enough for you to feel it on your cheek, and you can see a little leaf moving on a tree. At three, they call a gentle breeze, the small twigs will start to blow around and move. And at four, the large branches on trees are starting to move. Five is the small trees themselves are starting to sway in the wind. Six, you've got wind whistling through wires, right? Your umbrella gets completely collapsed and blown out on itself. Seven is even the big trees are starting to sway and move, right? So it gets progressively more and more powerful. By the time you've got eight, the wind is blowing off little branches and, and <laughs> it's time to run inside. Right? The scale, though, goes all the way up to 12. And they've got cool names. Right? Is this a strong breeze? Is this a high wind? Is this a gale? Is this a strong gale? So they've got all these cool names, and you can start to figure out what those are. The Beaufort wind scale is a ton of fun. In addition to wind speed, the direction of the wind is also something that we could record. So if the wind is blowing from one direction to another, you could describe that in either one of two ways. You could describe it as for the direction that the wind is blowing from and the, or the wind is blowing to. As a convention, in meteorology, when we describe wind direction, we refer to the direction that the wind is blowing fr from. So one way of doing that is just to slowly turn your body and face into the wind so that the wind is blowing right in your face. If you want to, some people will wet a finger, hold their finger up, and that helps them feel the cold side to figure out which direction the wind is blowing from. You could also take a small pinch of dust or leaves and blow it in, let go of it into the air and watch which direction it floats. You end up with the wind blowing right in your face. And the strategy then <clears throat> is to get a compass and to use that to determine which direction the wind is blowing from. So if you, if there are clear landmarks in your area and you already know those sort of things, that's, that's great. But for most of us, it really, really helps to have a compass to be able to determine that direction. And let's say the, 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 it's blowing from the north west. We call this a northwesterly wind. And one way of recording this is you could just write northwesterly wind in your journal. Um, you also could draw a little carrot. Sort of imagine a, um, a little compass rose, and this is my northwesterly direction. And here. I'm going to say that this wind is blowing with a Beaufort wind scale 
force of seven from the northwest. And if you want to, you can embellish these sort of notes. with some little wind lines. That's just for fun. So in my journal, I can keep track of <clears throat> not just what the wind force is, but which direction it comes from. And that ends up being really significant, really, really interesting. It turns out that as a storm front moves through your area, it will change the direction that the wind comes from. So if you start to track that, you'll be able to, um, to, to follow whether a storm is arriving or leaving. Pay attention to it in your area. As a storm is leaving, what direction do the winds come from? As a new storm is coming into your area, what directions do you see? So you've got the direction and the speed. Those are both really useful ways of describing that wind. Wind is, it's, it's, it's invisible, it's powerful, and we can see the effects of it all the way around us. So let's, let's also just start to play with that in our journal. And it will open your eyes to this whole invisible, wonderful, fluid world of air. Your challenge this week, just get yourself a copy of the scale, put it into your journal, and start running around and playing with wind and see what you notice. And until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.